There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of a Canadian novella that I just read recently on Scribd as an ebook. It's called Malagash and the author is Joey Camo, a gay male Canadian writer. I didn't find out he was gay until about 20 minutes ago. Now I know why I love this book. There are some very secondary gay characters in the story, but I had no idea. So fabulous. Uh, this is one of the most touching works of fiction that I have read in a long, long time. And what makes it work on the level of emotional poignancy is that it's so badass and irreverent. <laughs> so, oh my god! The central character is Sunday. Sunday is a teenage girl and her father, who isn't very old, because she's maybe 16, I don't know if we can find out exactly how old she is, but she is old enough to have an attitude. And her father, he might be 40, and he's dying of cancer. Cancer's gone all through his body. He's only got a few days or a few weeks left to live, and he wants to die in his hometown on the north shore of Nova Scotia in Canada. I don't think we ever find out where the family lived before that, but the mother, the father, and Sunday, and her baby brother, he seems like he's like six or seven, often referred to as the waif by Sunday. And the whole family is irreverent, so it's just, he's dying, everyone's sad, and nobody can stop making jokes. And so that is the kind of fiction about something so serious and heart-tugging that works for me the best. I absolutely love this novella. It was published in 2017. I'd never heard of Joey Camo. He is a multimedia person. He writes web comics, graphic novels. I don't know what all. I want to read it all. But this novella just ripped my heart out. I'm smiling because it was such a beautiful and very comic experience of being deeply moved. So Sunday's got an iPhone or a smartphone, and so she keeps leaving it lying around and she surreptitiously records her father talking because she knows he's only going to be alive for a few more weeks or months and she wants to record absolutely everything that he says and she gets this cockamamie idea that she's going to embed all of his sayings and stories and conversations into a web virus and she's going to make that virus go viral so that she can keep her father's words alive in the universe. It is a cockamamie idea, and I'm revealing my age by using such an antiquated adjective, but that's what animates her. That is what keeps her going, and that is what propels the work of fiction forward. So we hear and very quickly get to know her father, and he is just a lovely man who can't even take his own death seriously. The whole family is like that. Uh, they do make special allowances for the young boy. They don't joke about death with the young boy, but the mother is like that, and Sunday's like that, and the repartee between them is filled with a wrenching emotional power because everybody's laughing, but they're really crying, and it, I don't know how he did it. When I l go through the pages and I want to lift out one quote to share with you, nothing conveys what the totality of this short novel conveys. It's really hard to write about somebody dying and how their family reacts. It's a story that's been done to death in TV movies of the week and really bad fiction and it's also been done incredibly movingly and Joy Camo does it in a way that feels fresh and new and absolutely devastating. But I have chosen as an excerpt a, a very short chapter. All of the chapters are very short. The novella is only about a hundred pages. The chapters are usually a page, page and a half and one chapter is devoted to a playlist of Sunday's dad's dumb jokes and I'm gonna read that. It's not even a page so I'm gonna read it to you and you know, it's just dumb joke after dumb joke. There's so much more to the novel than that, but it does give you a sense of at least the comedy of it. I've started a playlist of my dad's dumb jokes about dying. There's a light in my father's voice when he jokes like this that he knows will brighten the room. Dying and handsome. Mothers, lock up your daughters. They better not have chickens in heaven. Chickens are idiot eagles and I hate them. 
Nurse, could you have the doctors check to make sure I have the right skeleton in? This doesn't feel like mine. Hmm, what should I wear today? Dying isn't even the worst part of all this. The worst part is that I'll never get to be a cranky old lady in line at the grocery store. Oh good, we all lived another day. I mean, some of us had to work harder at it than others. I'm just saying. I'm not kidding. Chickens are garbage. Was that a smile? You can't laugh at my jokes. I'm dying. And... To be honest, I feel kind of foolish for eating all those salads. I like to lay in the top bunk at night and stare at the weird, uneven, stucco faces in the ceiling. And I drift off to the sound of my father, not being afraid. You have to read this. It's available as an ebook on Scribd. It's cheap in paper format or ebook for format elsewhere. Uh, you're in for a special treat. Thanks for watching.